Hello, welcome back to another video presented by Acuity PPM where today we're covering portfolio risk management. And before we get started, I want to remind you, don't forget to subscribe to our channel because we're putting out great content that you don't want to miss that will help you better manage your portfolio. So with that, let's get started. And the first question is, what is portfolio risk management? And in this video, we're going to cover two components or aspects of portfolio risk management. The first is the traditional view, which is about managing portfolio level risks or risks that impact the portfolio or, or impact our ability to execute strategy. They're very similar to project risk management. The other is portfolio risk tolerance. How much risk in aggregate are we allowing into the portfolio? What is our risk tolerance with managing the portfolio? And so in the context of the portfolio life cycle, it's helpful to point out where these two aspects of portfolio risk management reside. Now, the first two, define the portfolio and optimize portfolio value, relate to our portfolio risk tolerance. In the define phase, we're defining the composition of the portfolio by selecting good projects, but we're also defining the parameters of the portfolio, including the level of risk we're willing to have in the portfolio. And then based on that, when we optimize the portfolio, we want to maximize project value and therefore portfolio value, taking into account the level of risk associated with it. Or another way, we want to balance the, the risk in the portfolio. That third phase, protecting portfolio value, is where we're protecting the delivery of the portfolio, which is really the projects and programs in the portfolio. And we do that by managing portfolio level risks that could impact or jeopardize the completion of projects and or compromise our ability to deliver our strategy. So with traditional portfolio risk management, let's cover a couple of definitions. A portfolio risk are the sets of events or conditions that have a positive or negative effect in the portfolio. This is a definition from PMI, from their standard for portfolio management. We're gonna focus in this video on the things that can negatively impact the portfolio. If you're interested in opportunity management, I suggest you take a look at our blog because we do have a section in there on managing portfolio opportunities. So based on that then, portfolio risk management are the steps or processes that we take to uh, increase the likelihood of positive things, the opportunities, or decrease the likelihood of negative things, which is the risk management. And according to PMI, there's four basic processes to consider. The first is identifying the risks. So we want to identify portfolio risk. We want to analyze portfolio risk. Analyze the likelihood, the severity, the triggers, etc. And then based on that, we want to develop the appropriate risk response. And then finally, we want to monitor and control portfolio risk. So you likely would want to assign an owner to specific portfolio risks, but I'd highly recommend you monitor this with the portfolio governance team because they're the primary decision makers for managing the portfolio. This diagram just helps show, uh, based on a traditional five by five risk grid, what the consequence and likelihood are of various portfolio related risks. And we'll talk about a few of the types of portfolio risks here. First one being external events. Now, clearly COVID-19 hit everyone and required an immediate response. That's more in line with issue management, but there's a lot of uncertainty for the future, not knowing how COVID-19 will impact our businesses three months, six months, 12 months down the road. So there, that's a risk management aspect. What will we do to manage risks related to COVID-19? There could be business changes. In, in our business environment. Maybe one of our competitors gets acquired or they go out of business. 
what would our response be as it relates to the portfolio? There could be economic changes. These are all factors that could impact negatively our ability to deliver the strategy. And then looking a little more inward, we could have a governance risk. And this relates to the performance or quality of our portfolio governance team. And this needs to be monitored. Are we approving everything? Are we making everything a high priority? Unfortunately, that's a common occurrence, but that compromises the ability to successfully execute the portfolio and deliver the portfolio with the corresponding strategies. So we need to account for that and monitor even the quality and performance of the governance. And then we've got performance related risk. And I'm, I'm thinking of this more in terms of our project performance and what can we do to improve project performance. So if the level of maturity of the project management is low, well that directly correlates with our ability to successfully deliver projects. Therefore, what would we do to mitigate that? For instance, do we need to hire more seasoned project managers? Do we need to provide more training? What can we do to improve the performance of our project teams? Then we've got specific project risks. And these are major risks, likely for our highest priority projects, that if we saw them realized, it would have a great impact on the portfolio. So these are examples of common types of portfolio risks, and the governance team should be monitoring this and managing this proactively. So then we have the matter of portfolio risk tolerance. So this is the other component of portfolio risk management. And we know that the, the discipline of project portfolio management stems from financial portfolio management, where we want to reduce risk by diversifying uh, our investments. We can basically diversify our risk away doesn't fully work the same with a project portfolio, but the concept is there. Along with that is the notion that the level of risk should be comparable to the level of return or value. So a high risk investment should also bring the potential for a high return. Therefore, investors need to understand their own level of risk tolerance when investing in finan making financial investments. So as we know, uh, seniors ready to retire, their risk tolerance very low. They're, they wanna protect what they've already gained. Someone new in their early in their career has a high risk tolerance, willing to take on greater risk for a greater return. So this brings us to a key point. The risk tolerance that we have helps drive our investment strategy. And this applies at the project portfolio level as well. Problem is a lot of organizations don't have insight into their own portfolio risk and there's a disconnect. They may say they, they have low risk tolerance, but they have a number of high risk initiatives in the portfolio or uh, vice versa. They say they, they're willing to take on a lot of risk yet they've got a lot of projects that are simply running the business and very little that are growing the business or transforming the business. So understanding risk tolerance will help drive your investment strategy or improve and improve your ability to deliver on that strategy. But unfortunately, too many projects, too many organizations don't recognize or realize the level of risk of their projects and somewhat fly blind, which is why having a portfolio risk management discipline enhances your ability to manage the portfolio. So to do this, it's valuable to use a scoring model to evaluate the riskiness of project investments. So not going to spend a lot of time on this because we have a whole other video on prioritization that I'd recommend you take a look at. But here we're looking at some fundamental criteria that we could use to evaluate the riskiness of an individual project based on the level of complexity, the, the impact to the organization, 
the resources needed, the dependencies between projects, or a regulatory impact. These are sample criteria to help us evaluate an overall risk profile or risk score for each individual project that we can then aggregate and utilize at the portfolio level. So it's valuable not only to measure the, the, ben the benefits of the project and the uh, business drivers of a project to get that value score, but also the risk score as well based on various criteria such as these. And when implementing this, and I've seen this at organizations, they're looking for a consistent risk score. But I want to point out that when you're measuring this, the portfolio risk is going to change. It's dynamic. And it's dynamic for a number of reasons, based on your budget, based on the number of projects, based on the level of risk of those projects. And so I want to use a couple of quick examples to highlight this and why it's important to measure the relative contribution of your project risk compared to the portfolio. So in scenario number one, we're suggesting that there's a small project, $100,000 project, really high risk, and that the rest of the portfolio is low risk. Question, does the portfolio have high risk? And I'd suggest that the answer is no. Even though there's a high risk project, the overall portfolio would have a low risk profile. But in scenario two, if that, that low that low cost project suddenly was like a seven million dollar project with against a ten million dollar portfolio budget, now the majority of the portfolio budget is for that one high risk project. Now the portfolio does in fact have high risk. So this is one view of looking at individual project contribution toward portfolio risk. And we can take it uh, a step further and continue the example that if the budget was to change in this example from 10 million to 100 million and everything else remained constant, we had a lot of low risk projects, well again, that one high risk project doesn't make the entire portfolio risky. The example, the pie chart on the right, $10 million portfolio budget, $7 million project, high risk. $100 million budget, one high-risk project of $7 million, low, far lower portfolio risk. So it's dynamic. Uh, as the portfolio budget changes, as new projects come in, as existing projects are either completed or canceled, the level of risk in the portfolio is going to change over time. It's dynamic. And the way we measure portfolio risk one easy way, and this is the science aspect of it, is we can take, we can measure the individual budgetary contribution of a project compared to the overarching portfolio budget, calculate the percentage that that of the, the budget that that project consumes, and measure that compared to the risk score. So we can use that scoring criteria that we talked about a few moments ago, calculate a risk score, compare that with the budgetary contribution to come up with a calculated score that we can aggregate and then come up with the overarching portfolio risk score. So here we've got the, the measurements on the right hand side. We've got a portfolio, sample portfolio risk gauge, just a fictitious example. And in this example, the level of risk is on the upper half and it's approaching the higher risk portion of the for the portfolio based on the color so it's approaching that high risk quadrant or section so this is part of the science and as long as you've got your risk scores and you've got budget it's very easy to calculate the overarching portfolio risk in your current portfolio and then finally we can visualize this using the same risk and value scores to plot a risk value bubble chart. It's another view. The portfolio risk gauge is valuable. The risk value bubble chart is valuable to help us spot high risk projects with low value. And to me, that's one of the biggest benefits of using this is identifying the projects, in this case, in the upper left quadrant. 
why do we have so many projects of lower value and higher risk? Now there may be reasons why we have to do them, but we should be asking the question, why do we have low value, high risk projects? And vice versa, how do we get more low risk, high value projects into the portfolio? If we look at the lower right hand quadrant, how do we get more of those types of projects into the portfolio so that we can have high value, lower, lower risk? So in summary, there's two components of portfolio risk management, the traditional view where we're managing portfolio level risks. And then the second aspect is the portfolio risk tolerance. And in actuality, if we combine these two practices together, it actually enables organizations to proactively take on more risk and therefore potentially maximize or further maximize the value of the portfolio because they're proactively evaluating the level of risk in the portfolio and they're monitoring and managing portfolio level risks that could compromise the organization's ability to deliver on their strategy. So if you've got questions, leave a, leave a comment below, promise to answer, or just say yes or no, are you managing portfolio risk today? Leave a comment below, promise to answer. Thank you for watching and have a great day.